Hey guys, it's really, 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 really cold today. And though I got the heat blasting because I got all these windows in my apartment, it's just so difficult to keep the place hot. Under normal circumstances, toasty warm. Today, when you got minus 38 with the windshield factor, this is Celsius, so it's really cold. It's difficult to keep the place warm. I'm using my old DSLR here because uh, I'm doing a bit of a vlog format today. So you see all the windows that I have. That's really, really hard to keep warm. Anyhow, so I'm going to go make my tea and then I'm going to answer a couple questions about SQL. So somebody asked me if SQL developer was a good career for 2018 and he got warnings from friends that you shouldn't do it so what I did is what I tell everybody to do first thing you do is check to see what the local job listings are for SQL developers see what the demand is see what the requirements are see what the pay is and see if that fits you right away so I went to indeed.com and I'm not promoting indeed you can go to many job sites and I would suggest you go to at least two or three Indeed's the one that I know of, so I check it out. And I just checked to see what was available. And indeed, there were several jobs for SQL developers. If you're not sure what SQL is, SQL is a structured query language. It is the language of relational databases. Relational databases include MySQL, SQL Server, Oracle, and there are several others. But MySQL, Oracle, SQL are the ones that are super popular these days sql developers are a bit of a niche type of developer and it's not one of these sexy new languages like javascript it's not one of the sexy new uh, developer jobs like ai developer or machine learning developer or a cryptocurrency developer it's not in the super hot sector but sometimes being in well-established sectors that are not super hot could be extremely lucrative in that in that you're not going to have as much competition so you would have to just look around in your area and see what the demand is see what people are looking for and then you can make your decision based on that so if you're an sql developer you're going to be working with databases all the time you're going to be writing sql queries this is basically code that is used to talk to databases and you're going to be likely working for very large, well-established organizations where you have human resource departments and so on. So check out Indeed.com or other job sites. See what requirements they have in terms of your skill sets. See if they need degrees or not. Because if you don't have a degree and you want to become an SQL developer, and you may find that you need to get yourself a comp sci degree or maybe you need a certification in database administration, you have to check into that. When you are getting into languages like SQL, Java, .NET, these languages are more or less used in large organizations. They call that the enterprise. You have to expect you're going to have to go through HR, human resources, HR red tape, which means you're going to have to have certain certifications and degrees, well, at least more likely. Or you need to have a lot of job experience that you can show. This is very different than if you got a job uh, in, in, in the startup world where they care a little less, well, much less about degrees, or if you're going into freelance or small business development or WordPress or PHP development. In these other areas, it's much more about the skills than the, the degree. So you, if you don't have a degree and you, don't want to, you want to save yourself three years or two years or whatever it happens to take you to get a particular type of degree or diploma, then you might want to consider other languages like the PHPs, like uh, like the Ruby, like the WordPress developer, that kind of stuff. And you know, in terms of salaries, it's all in certain ranges depending on your level of experience. So you may look at, for instance, uh, data scientists with Python. Wow, that's amazing! But then you have to 
become a data scientist, right? It's not just the Python code. If you look at machine learning and AI, that's, I think, probably you're more flexible there. As long as you have the chops and skills, I'm probably going to hire you because there's such a demand for it. Same thing with cryptocurrency, if you want to get into that. That said, in terms of cryptocurrency development, I would be very careful. There's, there's going to be big demand for that, but I think cryptocurrencies right now are in a massive mania and a bubble. And that means there's going to be a crash happening. So some of you guys are into cryptomania, into cryptomania. Please think about this. The Ripple founder, Ripple, which has no value, it doesn't do anything, has nothing. The Ripple founder for a period of time this week was worth as much as Mark Zuckerberg. Think about that. This guy, this kid who has a large stake in Ripple coins, which are just results of mathematical equations like all the other cryptos, he was worth as much as Mark Zuckerberg. The guy who has uh, the big sh biggest shareholder of the biggest social network in the world that generates billions and billions of dollars in revenue every year, is super solid, has millions of users. Does it make any sense to you that the founder of a cryptocurrency barely anybody uses, it doesn't have any utility at this point, and has 10,000 competitors, and me and you can come up with killer coins tomorrow, and say, wow, killer coins are much better than Ripple coins, much better than Bitcoin because of all these reasons. And then everybody will start buying into it. Somebody put up a, a coin called Dogecoin, dog coin. It's like based on some dog or something or some, it's, it's based on nonsense. It was a joke. And uh, now it's got a market cap of a billion dollars. How does that make any sense? This is a classic, this is a classic bubble, classic mania. Look up tulip mania. Look up the dot-com mania and you see what I mean. So back to SQL developer. Yes, think about it in terms of what the type of work it is. Look into it. It may, it, it may appeal to you to work for a very large organization. That's cool. That's great. But you have to look at what the HR requirements are. Again, the first thing you got to do when you're looking at a job is A, to see whether or not there is demand for that type of software development, that type of programming, that type of coding in your area or the area you want to work, whether it's online or offline. And then you got to look at the job requirements. And just what I would suggest that you do is, first of all, do a little SQL, do a little SQL work. And uh, you probably have to have peripheral skills as well, because a lot of the jobs I checked out on the web, they require that you know a bit of Linux. They require that you may know some programming as well beyond SQL. So you may want to look into that as well. So uh, that's pretty much it. That's my tips on that.